5.10 is on the impacts of urbanization. So we've seen, um, so urbanization, I'm sorry, is the movement of people from rural areas to city areas, and then that entire area expanding as more and more people move to that area. And we've seen, um, especially since the Industrial Revolution, an enormous amount of people moving to the urban areas um, as it's more, uh, it provides more opportunities for jobs, for education, um, artistic opportunities, you know, there's, just, there's more culture, there's just more stuff happening, and being in that region um, just as provides more opportunities. And then conversely, we see the rural areas decreasing and expected to be um, to peak, looks like, from May 2025, and then begin to decline. On the one hand, urbanization uh, allows people to just be closer together, uh, closer to where they need to be. So they tend to use less fossil fuels because they can easily walk or bike to where they need to go, whether it's their job or their groceries or whatever. Uh, there's also more opportunities for public transportation. But on the other hand, cities overall use more fossil fuels. There are more vehicles in the cities. Uh, they don't grow their own food, typically, so they have to uh, import those from farms. And then any other goods that can't be made in the city had to be imported as well. Uh, there are also you know, a lot of buildings that individually use a lot of power to for heating and cooling, lights, and all that stuff. It also produces a lot of waste. Um, and then landfills, converse, or on top of that, produce a lot of carbon dioxide and methane, which are both greenhouse gases. Also, along with the waste... We've seen a lot of issues with cities having to contend with water pollution, air pollution. Another issue is earth, urban heat island effect, and that's due to the lack of vegetation. Uh, cities absorb a lot more heat. We can actually see that if we graph the temperature in a, you know, urban area and the surrounding suburban and rural areas, we see that the temperature increases around, um, like in the city, and then decreases as you go out. So. There are solutions, things like, you know, adding in more vegetation, grain roofs and urban farms. Uh, the video we watched in class mentioned a type of pavement used in Tokyo that absorbs less heat. So there are options, but it is um, a reality that they have to contend with. And then we'll talk about, when we get to the air pollution, that this effect causes heat, or the, because the heat gets trapped in the cities, it also traps in air pollution as well. And so we get like this this blanket of of smog that just rests on the city because of the, the high temperatures. Another issue with urban areas are the, all the impervious surfaces. That's because so much of it is made of human-made structures such as roads and buildings, sidewalks, parking lots, and because of all these surfaces that are impervious, water can't reach the soil. And that means that because it can't soak into the ground, it, those areas get flooded. And it's also harder for groundwater to be recharged as well. So we see aquifer depletion occur, um, whatnot. Another issue with that um, with these impervious surfaces and then the flooding is that when it rains, all that water just kind of flows over those impervious surfaces and carries pollutants with it. Things like pet waste, leaves, fertilizers, motor oil, detergents, trash, basically anything on the street just gets washed away with the rain, but then it all pools into one area. And typically our waterways, unless, well, I think we'll talk about this in water pollution. Yeah, we, we will. Uh, there are technologies that, or some cities that do like stormwater runoff treatment, but there are some wastewater treatments that they're designed, um, if they can't handle all of that, that wastewater or the stormwater runoff, then some of it has to go directly into the waterways. It doesn't all necessarily get treated. Going off of the aquifer depletion, um, because like I said, it's harder for aquifers to recharge with all those impervious surfaces, and then you're also using a lot of water. It causes over-depletion of the aquifers, and then if it's a coastal area, 
So we see this issue with, for instance, Miami. If it's a coastal area, that salt water and fresh water are very close to each other under the surface. And if we've under, or if we've over pumped these wells, then the salt water will seep in. It can cause all sorts of issues. Um, for one, the corrosion of the pipes, that water is not safe to drink, not safe to use on plants, um, a lot of issues that go in with this. Another issue with cities is the um, issue of urban sprawl. So urban sprawl is basically when cities build out instead of up. So we see an increase of high population density or a distribution, change in distribution from the high population density area to low density suburbs. And that just kind of spread out all over the place. Um, it's, it's a whole, there's a whole bunch of issues that go along with it. Things like you use more water pollution, more air pollution because, you know, you're building more, more stuff. And so you always have more pollution when it comes to that. But also because this means that people work in the city but then live out there in the suburbs, there's increased traffic back and forth. So you have more carbon dioxide being emitted. We have more chances of crashes because there are more vehicles and more um, more high congestion. We lose agricultural land and so that pushes the farms further and further back and that means the um, greater distance that that food has to be transported in order to get to the place of where we're going to eat it. We've increased runoff, increased impervious surfaces, so we're spreading all that out. There's more habitat destruction, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. We'll talk a lot more later about some solutions to the some issues with urban urbanization. The couple I want to talk about right now are the Wilderness Act. So the Wilderness Act basically says that there's this land has to be roadless and free of development, and that preserves areas in order to preserve the biodiversity um, so that there can be no development whatsoever. Another important thing are what's called urban growth boundaries, which um, this is, I believe, Boulder. Um, it literally means like you cannot build anything beyond this, this, this boundary. So it forces people to be creative with what space they have, um, fill in like the little spots, build up if possible, um, all that stuff. In summary, describe the effects of urbanization on the environment. 